All right, you guys, this is Ross. Today's video is extremely exciting for me. I hope it's exciting for you guys because we have an, a, a persimmon tasting that we're gonna do today. I have three different varieties here of persimmon that I harvested from my own yard, my own trees. We ripened them pro probably to perfection and we're gonna evaluate them and see really which one I think is the best in this particular video. Uh, I am a huge fan of persimmons. I know a few of you guys on the channel, you know that. I know we talk a lot about figs. We obsess over figs. We've researched a lot about them, dedicated a lot of my life to that fruit. But a lot of you didn't know, I think, that this is actually my favorite fruit. Um, and the reason I think for that is because the persimmon here in this climate is a lot more consistent at a higher quality than a fig is. You know, if I put up the best fig that I ever taste versus the, you know, just an average persimmon that we're gonna get here today, they're like neck and neck uh, because persimmons just do so well here, you know, and they would do well, obviously in a drier place. Uh, the less water they get, usually the better they're gonna taste in a drier climate. They're obviously gonna be better fruits, but the persimmon just is more well adapted here in terms of its fruit quality. Uh, and for that reason, I put it above the fig. Now, if I lived in California and I was getting, you know, super awesome varieties that were caprified, grown in the most perfect fig climate and comparing them to the same thing here as the, of the persimmon, I'm not sure if I'd feel the same way, to be honest with you. Um, I really don't know, but I'll tell you this, at least here, this is really one of the most reliable, amazing fruit trees that really is, I, you know, they call it the nectar of the gods, I think, if I'm not mistaken. The persimmon really is top of the line. And it's a shame a lot of people don't uh, know about this tree, uh, especially of non-Asian cultures or non-Mediterranean uh, cultures. This is really one of the best things you can grow by far, and especially here in Pennsylvania. So um, I've been kind of making it my mission to talk more about this. And, you know, we're going to talk, obviously, about the fruits today and doing a tasting today. But behind me, I have a, a proc tree. This has probably been in the ground for this is its third year, if I, had a, if I had a guess. Also, this celebrity has been here for three years. We still have a few more fruits on this American persimmon, the celebrity persimmon to, uh, to taste and actually to ripen. Um, and I'll go throughout in the next couple weeks in different videos as we talk more about this fruit. We'll talk about the trees. I'll show you guys all the different trees, what's been going on. And then of course, more about this fruit in different ways that you can enjoy it in the form of, let's say, a dried persimmon. You know, because this is the end of my season. And this really is the last fruit of the year to ripen. I know the figs can go all the way to frost, even the raspberries pretty much go all the way to frost. Even my Mara de Bois raspberry will continue, or I'm sorry, the Mara de Bois strawberry continues to go till frost. I, I still have muscadine grapes, which I would consider a fall grape. And then, you know, in typical circumstances, if I had a more mature orchard or more mature trees, I'd be seeing things like apples still on the trees of late varieties. I probably would even be seeing, you know, very, very late varieties, perhaps of plums. Um, you know, things like an Italian prune plum that will ripen probably sometime in October. Um, I'd also probably be seeing um, pears that maybe not necessarily are still ripening on the trees, but I have them in the fridge and I have them, uh, you know, access to them at any time of the year that I would like. Uh, just taking them out of the fridge, out of that storage, putting them on the counter for a few days and then having and enjoying the fruits basically throughout the winter time. So that's the beauty of this fruit is it not only just kind of ends the season, you know, it really um, is a nice finish to the year, but you can also extend the season uh, really far with just this fruit. So, you know, I have citrus trees that we have in pots and those will ripen, believe it or not, in the middle of the winter. And that's awesome. But you know, with particular varieties, you could still have persimmons on your trees uh, well into the wintertime, you know, well into December. Um, you know, a frost is going to probably hit them many times and 
perhaps speed up that ripening process and you know that's not sometimes in certain situations a good thing or necessarily a bad thing but with particular varieties I, I know down in Virginia you can have fruits if you look at edible landscapings orchard down in Afton Virginia you know that's a zone seven just like where I'm at you can have you know persimmons that are ripening into March so if you choose the right varieties um, you can have orange globes hanging from your trees throughout the winter and even into the spring of the following season. Isn't that insane? So, or at least what I would consider the spring, maybe not technically spring, but um, yeah, I think that's just really the, one of the most spectacular things about this fruit. In addition, you can dry them into something called hoshigaki, which I find is really my favorite dried fruit above and beyond Majul dates yada 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 i think it's i think it's just overall a fantastic fruit so you know i'm excited um i have here in front of me a proc persimmon so that's the tree here on the right behind me and it's uh really dug itself in well i've already enjoyed half of it and uh <laughs> this one actually fell off the tree so you know it's ripe. it's got some seeds in it Proc is an American persimmon. It's, um, it's got a good reputation, I think, for flavor, um, production, for earliness. Um, I value it for that. I know in prior years it's fruited a little bit earlier than it has this year. And uh, usually this is like the first persimmon of the year for me. This and another one called Gil Ya I've decided to acquire really are the first ones in... Um, the goal was to get these fresh before the frost uh, kind of comes in and kind of speeds up that ripening process for me. I'd rather have them ripen, it seems like to me, on the tree before frost if possible. Uh, we also have here a, uh, a Rosianca persimmon. This one might be a little weird. This is the first one off of the tree this year. I uh, have many more, probably somewhere around 25, maybe 20, 20 persimmons this year off of that tree. That's my oldest tree, but this one's been a bit weird, and I wonder if um, it's not totally ripe just yet, if maybe there is some astringency left within it. And that's the, you know, the trick with these guys at this point that maybe a lot of you don't know is that there are two types of persimmons, the astringents, the non-astringents. The three we're looking at today are all astringent. So we have to let them ripen very soft and they have to be softer than a tomato before we can eat them. This last one here is a tree that's planted in the front by the main street. I'm trying to get this camera to focus here. There we go. And this is a Miss Kim. So this is an Asian persimmon that uh, is also an astringent. It kind of looks like a fuyu. And it also kind of tastes like a fuyu, believe it or not. But you have to eat it when it's soft, when it's lost that astringency. If you don't eat these when they're soft, softer than a tomato, really gooey, then you're gonna kind of regret it. So let's try the proc first. This one's been very impressive to me over the years that I've planted it. Even from the first year I planted it, I, I believe I got some fruit off of it. It's just so good. So it's got like this um, earthiness to it, like a little chalkiness. Um, maybe a little bit of cinnamon, some kind of spice that uh, is not overwhelming. It's so it's very minor, but it's there. It's very dry. The pulp is very um, jammy and thick. And this is why I love these fruits, especially the, the astringent ones, because they get the texture of jam, just like a fig. And I've talked a lot to, a lot to you guys about the textures of figs and how some are very sticky and jammy. Some of them um, you know, actually have a, the consistency of a cake or like a pastry. A lot of people describe certain varieties like uh, as, as pasty. This is how I would describe it. It, it is very pasty. 
Um, there are some seeds in it and it's not the worst thing in the world. I don't mind that at all. Um, they're quite big, they're easy to get rid of. It's very sweet, very gooey, very jammy. Really good intense uh, persimmon flavor that is also combined with that, that American persimmon flavor that you get, which is kind of like people say like rum raisin. To me, it's a lot like a, a raisin or a date or a dried fig. They really get this dried fruit flavor that uh, I think is above and beyond any other fruit you can grow here. When you get some figs, like I know my little ruby fig over there um, that's in the ground, that one as it ripens and as it starts to dry on the tree, you will get those dried fruit flavors of, you know, like a persimmon. But this is there every single time, very easily, very desirable. I don't know why people don't give the American persimmon a lot of credit. That's a very, very good piece of fruit. It's also chewy. There's a little bit of chewiness in it on the skin and the outside. Let's try this uh, Rosianca. I hope it's not astringent. Whoa. So. I should have saved this one because I've realized that the Miss Kim is the Asian, right? But the Rosianca is the cross between the American and the Asian. But it's going to taste more like an Asian persimmon. And, uh, you know, I just tasted it right now, and it doesn't have as much of that rum raisin, that uh, dried fruit flavor to it as proc. But it is, it is somewhat there. And if I recall correctly, it will come in as this starts to ripen more. But that's what I think separates the American persimmon mostly from the Asian persimmon. And I don't know why people don't necessarily like that or maybe they do like it. They just don't know that they like it as much as they do. I think that's one of the best flavors within fruits, period, is that dried fruit flavor. That's what you find in, um, you know, really well-aged red wines. They all turn into those raisin-like, they get those ro raisin-like, um, you know, consistencies to them. Well, it depends on the variety of the grape, but, um, you know, as typically as red wines age of particular grapes, I guess, you get more of that dried fruit flavor. And that to me is just, I mean, that's a huge part of what you're paying for. So the one side of the fruit hasn't right hasn't softened up properly, but it's still really good. It's more loose, not as jammy as the uh, the proc, but I'm gonna reserve judgment on this because this fruit is incredible. I remember from last year or the year before, I can't remember which one it was that it absolutely blew me away. It's such a good tasting fruit. And I don't know if I could say that one is better than the other. Let's try Miss Kim. Hmm. A lot of juice on this one. Not as, not as thick as Proc or Rosianca. Chewy skin, which I really like. I'm sure I'm making a mess here. So that to me, uh, if anyone has ever had Hychea at the store or from the grocery store, maybe from a farmer's market. That's kind of what that reminds me of. And I know they're gonna get better. Um, it's obviously better than a Hychea. Hychea is from the store, and that's the unfortunate part about store-bought persimmons is that they just don't live up to the hype of 
the persimmons that I'm talking about here in this video. They just don't. You gotta grow them yourself, and that's the unfortunate part, right? I wish I could buy them. I wish everybody could buy them at the store, but you, you can't. They, they're picked too early, and that's kind of the vibe here. I picked that Miss Kim a little too early. I know that I've been picking a couple of them too early because I've just been so excited. Um, and I let them sit on the counter for like a week or two and then let them soften. But ideally what you want is let them soften up on the tree. They do that, Miss Kim I think is gonna really blow me away, but for now it's only marginally better than a Rosianca, I'm sorry, a Hychia that you would get at the store. Um, so it tastes similar, it's more mild in flavor, it's uh, maybe a bit watered down in flavor, um, not as intense, refreshing, you know, it's still very, very sweet, uh, but it's still, it's just not my particular preference when I'm eating these fruits, is that I really love them more intense, super sweet, super gooey, as much flavor as we can get. I mean, picking them at the right optimal time obviously goes a long way with any fruit. So that's kind of the video here, guys, of just me doing this little tasting. I wish we had them all a little bit more perfect, um, but I will in the future, so we'll see. But that'll be the only proc. I think that's really the only one for the year. And uh, it was good, I think, to at least get that one on camera because this particular persimmon I find is super, super good. And I'm hoping that the same thing could be true for this celebrity, which is also an American. And I'm hoping that I'm finding that actually the American persimmons are my favorites rather than the Asians. Um, and I'd rather probably just stick with American persimmons than even trying to find an Asian persimmon that's hardy to my zone in zone seven. Uh, I think maybe that doesn't make a ton of sense just based on my own taste preferences. So that was this video here, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. You learned something. You got something out of this. There was quite a big difference, by the way. I know someone might ask. There was quite a big difference in the flavor of all three. So uh, I wouldn't say it's a huge difference. You know, it's kind of like one fig variety to another fig variety. It can be quite drastic, but typically it's, you know, all re they're all persimmons at the end of the day. Compare the proc to the Miss Kim, big difference. So, yeah, I think that's an interesting way to put it. But we'll see you guys soon, all right? Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll catch you for the next video. Stay tuned for more on persimmons.